Welcome back, all my Dragon Ball theorists. Been a little bit since I uploaded a video, but you know I can't miss out on a Vegeta chapter, especially when it was done, in my opinion, extremely well. Between the dialogue, the action, and the artwork, this chapter just flowed amazingly and highlighted how far Vegeta's character has come. Like many of you, I was worried about this chapter because Vegeta is the backbone of Dragon Ball Super and has gotten so much development, it would be a shame to waste it. So I applaud Toyotaro with this chapter and for not rushing the fight at all and to tease us with things to come, such as Vegeta's God of Destruction form. So now nothing but hype will be in the DBS community around what is going to happen next, and that is important for storytelling. Chapter 74 kicks off with the Sugarians trying to escape the battle zone. We have Granola staring at Vegeta, who stepped in front of an unconscious Goku, preventing him from finishing him off. You should know, tricks like fusion and clones won't work against me. The extremely confident Granola isn't worried though, and was only using a clone to conserve his strength to kill Frieza, who he still thinks is their boss. Vegeta smirks as he could care less about Frieza, and even lets Granola know he is considered a foe. The Cerulean isn't buying it though and thinks it's a form of small talk to beg for his life. Now in this chapter, since this is the actual Granola, we have Oatmeal chiming in to offer his guidance and say isn't it strange that the other Saiyan said he wasn't an evildoer? They both agree they are likely just saying it to save their own skins. Then despite Vegeta saying he was only a child during the invasions and it having nothing to do with us, Granola wants nothing more than just revenge against all Saiyans. I expected as much. If that's your stance, then why should I hold back? Prepare to perish, along with your people's history. Again, I love this dialogue with Vegeta, and I do think we are seeing this side of him because of his training with Beerus. Then starts off by showing some of the techniques he learned from Beerus by causing rocks from the ground to raise up around Granola so he can use destruction on them, causing massive energy to be released. As we know, destruction is almost a form of antimatter, and when it is used on something, it releases these massive blasts, as we can see here. I think Granola is growing on me a little bit. I know some like and dislike him, and have good reasons for both. I do like the arrogant stance though since he feels his power is above everyone and he lets Vegeta know his destructive power is lacking. Let me illustrate the gulf between us as a massive boulder is raised behind him. I think Toyotaro has improved not just in the artwork but how he gives us the images. We see the shocked look on Vegeta's face, the start of an explosion, and then the next panel, the back view of the clouds of the explosion behind him propelling him into Granola. This was a really nice touch how this was drawn. Then Vegeta taking a massive hit to his midsection and despite the pain, decides to try and surprise Granola with a point blank energy blast. I have to say it's super impressive what Granola can do with his improved version of instant teleportation. To be able to instantly teleport out of the way of danger at that range is something I bet Goku wish he could do. Not sure how you defeat an enemy like this, but Vegeta plans on finding out, as he follows Granola into the air and begins a frontal assault. Being how powerful Granola is and a clone of him pushed Goku to perfect Ultra Instinct, I think this is turning out how we expected, at least for this part of the chapter, as everything Vegeta does isn't much of an effect on him. However, he does manage to block hits, and I believe that Vegeta has a plan, which we will see him talk about later. So he is just preventing Granola from doing anything that would be really harmful to him. After taking a hit to the face, Vegeta is sent underwater where he plays a game of cat and mouse which we have seen many times in Dragon Ball using this tactic. Finally, Vegeta comes out of the waterfall still while under heavy fire, goes back down and in to avoid these attacks. It's interesting that he does manage to get away for the moment, and Granola calls him a jerk. I really do like these techniques of Granola, it's definitely entertaining as he asks for an assist from Oatmeal. Then combining his backhand with his front sniper shot, almost acting like a long range bow, zeroing in on Vegeta in the distance. Then at last Granola has Vegeta where he wants him and lets this long range attack rip, and there is no dodging it so he must try to stop it head on. Granola tells him he has no chance, but he definitely doesn't understand the fight that is in Vegeta and giving up isn't an option. 
Now in this panel here, I almost missed it the first time, but you can see that he counters the attack by using destruction on it. Destroying Granola's attack though causes the release of a huge amount of energy which he narrowly manages to escape. Granola is surprised yet again and I have a feeling he will regret not going all out coming up. You still sound awfully high and mighty about it. Granola doesn't have a worry in the world it appears, no matter how powerful you are. I remain the strongest in the universe. This struggle is pointless. I think this dialogue here is important as Vegeta says, I have to admit, at the moment your strength and technique surpass my own. Key word there, at the moment, as he lets him know he is still going to win. Granola doesn't follow and takes to insults of his ego detaching Vegeta from reality, which in the past that might be somewhat accurate to say, but this time is different. As Vegeta taunts Granola, stop your yammering and keep fighting, Mr. Strongest. Goku finally wakes up and is in severe pain. He now tries to gather himself and wonders where is Granola as the battle continues as they fly by Goku's head. I don't know why Goku is surprised, of course Vegeta joined the fight, you would be dead otherwise. Vegeta tries a frontal attack but Granola just destroys it easily but this was only a distraction for a larger attack that annoys Granola as he also obliterates it. This is one of my favorite parts of the chapter, as Vegeta appears behind Granola and this was all a setup even though it appears Granola has him in his sights. As Vegeta dodges at the last moment and this blast heads right for the ruins of Granola's home where he grew up. Damn it! I absolutely love how Vegeta set him up here and then joyfully taunts him. You're fine blowing up what's left of the city, full of all those precious memories? You're a dead man. Vegeta isn't done yet. I can tell you know that you only recently acquired this absurd strength. Which does shock Granola. H how? How can you tell? Thank you for confirming. You're clearly not used to your power. You are majorly lacking in the battle experience to back it up. What have you been up to since gaining this power? Have you put it to use with any training? Training? No need. Which seems to be a reoccurring theme now where power attained without training being a weakness, if you will, as we saw that when Goku questioned Moro about his power and never training. Granola exclaims, witness the gap in our power and admit defeat, Saiyan. Need I repeat myself? You may be stronger, but that's no guarantee that I'll lose to you. Strongest in the universe or not, Vegeta smashing your knee hurts as Granola screams out in pain, then quickly kicks him off with his other leg. This power I've gained makes me the strongest. It's a given that I'll win here today. Vegeta chuckles at the inexperienced Granola. That's a great thing about battle. The outcome is never quite set in stone. It's exactly what I love about fighting. This only enrages Granola. Shut your mouth, barbarian. How many lives were sacrificed to your love of carnage? Vegeta dropping knowledge on Granola. Here's another tidbit. Strongest, second strongest, rankings are all well and good, but they only reflect a moment in time. Once that moment has passed by, it's nothing but history. Keep in mind, this was foreshadowed by Granola's master Manito when he said, don't let that power go to your head, boy. You may be the strongest today, but you don't know who or what tomorrow will bring. Now back to Vegeta. Take me for instance. I'm already stronger than I was a few minutes ago. I've grown more and more powerful throughout this dance of ours. So has Vegeta been using Granola this whole time? Treating him as a Zenkai boost if you will? Definitely interesting statements by Vegeta and that gives Granola a good enough reason to finish him off now. Vegeta manages to catch his arm, but it does pierce right through his armor as he was going for a vital point just like we saw many times in the fight against Goku. Blood is coughed up by Vegeta and is splashed down on the arm of Granola as he holds it in place. Then laughter begins. What fun. This feeling it's been ages. I don't know if Toyotaro is a Bleach fan, but this definitely was giving me some Kenpachi vibes, who is one of my favorite characters from that show, which means you know something awesome is about to happen. There's no planet to protect, no people to save, just me immersed in battle. My happy place. Just the thing to get a battle crazed Saiyan's blood pumping. Granola backs up and I would too looking at Vegeta. Then he begins to power up and becomes encased in these wild flames and that alone blows Granola back. Goku chimes in that Vegeta's key has changed. It feels like God key, 
but not just any old god key. Now Granola is about to witness the birth of a god of destruction. He now tries to shoot energy blasts at it, but they have no effect whatsoever. The flames start to fall away from Vegeta as a shock Granola says, What's happened to you? Then we see the very first look of God of Destruction Vegeta. The different pupils, he has the menacing Super Saiyan 3 look with no eyebrows and destruction energy popping off him. The hair is clearly different too, so it would be interesting to see a color version of this by Toyotaro or what they have in mind. Then the chapter ends with Vegeta saying, A God of Destruction taught me. The power derived solely from instinct is unbounded. Clearly this is a reference to Beerus stating that since he is focused only on destruction that there is no limit to his power. This is a fantastic way to end the chapter, this gave me goosebumps and I really love how the fight was done. Vegeta is the battle trained veteran, he went in there with a plan to drag this fight out and get stronger along the way and also savor and really enjoy just being in battle. That he can go all out for his own selfish desires instead of the typical having to save the universe. So now we get God of Destruction Vegeta, and he means business. I have to say with how strong Granola is and what he did to Goku, that things weren't looking good for Vegeta. However, there is no telling how powerful this new form is, and it looks like it might be enough power to defeat Granola. So next chapter should be absolutely lit, and can't wait to see the look on Goku's face when he sees Vegeta's transformation. Now tell me, what did you guys think of Chapter 74 of the DBS manga? Do you think the God of Destruction Vegeta and his new power can defeat Granola? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it and smash that like button. Also, please subscribe to support the channel and turn on that notification bell to keep those theories coming.